So let's see. Um, so the and they are all from chapter end. They usually are. <laughs> okay, the first question. There are very large numbers of charged particles in most objects. Why then do most objects exhibit static electricity? Um, because they are they have net. Uh, so add the positive and negative charges, add them all up together. They have net zero charge. Uh, that's a typical of most uh, macroscopic objects. And uh, it's uh, the thing that we bring up more in like astronomy. There's a mathematical relationship of force, strength, and distance is really similar between gravity and electrostatics. So, you know, in astronomy, why is it gravity that you care about more than electrostatics? And it's because with the electricity, there's a positive and minus charge. With the masses, there isn't such a thing as positive and negative mass. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that was the main point. Why do most objects tend to contain nearly equal numbers of positive? You know, this is actually an open question. Um, I myself prefer the somewhat, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, sorry, uh, I'm blanking out on the term. It's a logics term. Um, it, it's a statement that is true because it's true. Like uh, A is equal to A. Um, why am I forgetting the term? There's a word for it. So let me just give the statement. So th this would be like saying uh, most objects tend to contain equal numbers of positive and negative charges because that's the way it has to be. Electrostatic force is so strong. And the fact that positive and negative charges exist uh, means like if they didn't contain equal numbers of well, positive and negative charges, they would have be made to become that way. It's a tautological answer, and I love tautologists. Uh, one step and another. It's anyways, okay, I wasted no time on the question. Let me keep going with the rest. This portion was supposed to be short. Okay, two bodies attract each other electrically. Do they both have to be charged? Um, no, the answer is no. And I will leave it up to you to explain how two bodies could uh, attract each other if they are not both charged. And if they repel each other, then yes, they have to be both charged, and you should explain. Um, suppose you place a charge in your metal plate, it's attracted plate, then the plate, no. It, it, so the B is related to A, um, B, it's just that it explicitly involves a conductor. Um, and the mechanism by which this charge would be attracted to the metal plate is it the Q, uh, so the metal plate has, it's got, a lot of negative charges, free electrons, they get attracted. So assuming Q is positive, those electrons are attracted to the Q. So now there's a attraction between those electrons that have been pulled towards the Q. And, um, but the plate as a whole is not elect electrically charged. It's neutral. The farther side of the plate would be positively charged. Uh, now, if Q is repelled by the plate, then yes, the plate would have to be charged because um, the fact that Q is repelled means uh, it's not attracting at least enough of the opposite charge. Um, yeah, okay, let's keep going. Uh, this question, small pieces of tissue are attracted to a charge to comb, so let's stick into the comb. Oh, um, I don't know if, uh, let me give you, um, rather than explaining this, uh, which, um, you know, spoils the answer <laughs> entirely. Uh, let me show you the demo that I think you have seen. And I think this is a question, um, demo where, oh, wait, no. I, I've gotten feedback before where people were, um, uh, so there were other demo videos where I didn't really explain what's going on. So I think this is a place where it's good to uh, explain what's going on. So let me actually turn on the sound and make sure I'm sharing my sound with you. Um, so, so let me just run it through once and I will run it through a second time, providing a voiceover. That's gonna take five minutes. Yeah, I, I think it'll be fine. The point is um, one of the spheres getting charged, and actually the grounded sphere will also get charged 
because through the grounding, they'll pull out whatever charge it needs to, to balance out that uh, Van de Graaff generator's charge. So as we do the experiment, I'll just let it run first, and then we'll come back and replay, then I'll provide a voiceover. discharging um, all the metallic objects. So there's a subtle difference between each one. I think I need to keep the sound on for the most of it because uh, even though they're bouncing, it's kind of loud. Uh, I do need a click to know when the Van de Graaff generator is being turned off. So let's start from, uh, I think, here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm turning Van de Graaff generator on. So soon, the this sphere will be getting charged. Um, the aluminum tab is uncharged. This ground sphere is initially uncharged, but as Van de Graaff generates charge, this will gain the opposite charge. Notice how this aluminum tab is being attracted to the Van der Graaff generator. That's uh, what I was talking about in one of the other questions about uh, two objects electrically attracting. This is uh, right now neutral, but one side of it is charged oppositely to the Van der Graaff generator and the other charges gathering on this side. Once the tap touches the Van der Graaff generator, then it immediately gets repelled because the conductor touching conductor, whatever charge was on the Van der Graaff generator, it gets transferred to the tap. So the tap is immediately pushed away. Now, as it's pushed away, it touches it here, and then uh, it gets the charge of this other sphere. So it gets <laughs> repelled again. So this repeats over and over. Now, uh, so the click you just heard when I was stopping, that's the turning off of a Van der Graaff generator belt. Now, the charges that accumulated here, they are still there. So that's why the tab keeps bouncing back and forth still until, so this is actually carrying charges back and forth. The tab is moving back and forth to, to discharge these two spheres. Um, Now, here's an interesting thing. At the end here, the point where there's little enough charge left in the, on the spheres and the tap that it doesn't quite have enough to reach the other one. This is left with a small residual charge. That's equal sign as the last sphere it touched. So that's why when I turn the Van der Graaff generator back on, It, uh, it, yeah, it's initially repelled away and touches the other sphere first. Um, and, and the third try was just to confirming that if I start out with a clean slate, discharge everything, then it would get attracted uh, to the Van der Graaff generator initially again. Um, the matter of which sphere it touches first, it's a matter of uh, distance. Whichever sphere this tab was initially closer to, that's where it would have gotten attracted to. So the relationship of this question or this scenario 
and the question that I'm avoiding uh, giving answer to directly. So what's happening here, explaining it is also related to uh, thinking about it in terms of transfer of charges. Um, so one polarization, electrical polarization of an object, which uh, results in some kind of initial attraction. And then what happens after that is related to transfer of charge. One difference would be both uh, tissues and the comb, they are insulators. So any kind of charge transfer that may happen would be slower. Uh, it wouldn't be instantaneous like that it was with the aluminum tab and the, uh, those metal spheres. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, so I think I gave enough, but I didn't give you the whole answer yet, hopefully. <laughs> Last one, okay, would the defining the charge on an electron to be positive have any effect? No. Okay, and you should explain. <laughs> if the electric field at a point on the line, what I you know about the charges, that they are the same size. And you should explain. Uh, um, it, I think you can also say if they are opposite sign, then you can figure out that in between those two charges, electric field cannot be zero if they are opposite uh, sign the charges. Um, so the main thing you know is that the charges are positive and you can work backward or, or forward uh, why uh, the electric field between the two point charges being zero uh, would allow you to say, oh, those two charges must have the same sign, either both positive or both negative. So, um, 